Titleist Pro V1 2023 versus Shrixen Z Star Divide. <laughs> So I'm looking at the Titleist Pro V1 2023 against the 2023 Shrixen Z-Star Divide. They're both the premium golf balls from the Titleist and the Shrixen lineup. But we do have some really interesting differences in the Z-Star with a half and half golf ball. So this is the Titleist Pro V1 2023. There's some slight changes from the previous one. But this is basically your benchmark golf ball in the industry. Then I'm looking at the Shrixen Divide golf ball. We've got half and half. We've got half yellow, half white. It's a nice pearlescent kind of finish if you can see that there it kind of glistens quite nicely now i really liked the q star when they first come out in the uk to practice with because there's so many things you can do with them right at the end of this video i'm going to hit some shots with a q star tour i'm going to talk about some advanced ways of practicing your pitching so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to hit some pro v's and some tricksons against each other just some 50 yard shots i'm going to alternate each golf ball ball a and the pro v1 it might take me a couple of shots just to work out where 50 yards is a nice little thin one. Okay, well I've got the yardage pretty good. Now let's have a quick feel of the Z-Star. Now that was a better strike, so the golf ball's not really gonna be the reason behind that. Better contacts on the Pro V1. Nice drop and stop. It's weird, but I feel like the Shrixen's a slightly heavier golf ball. Now, I thought this last year about the Diamond. I don't know if there's any truth behind it whatsoever, but it just feels a little bit more substantial. I don't know whether that's good or bad or indifferent. Oh, I kind of hit that a little bit left. Still dropped and stopped. Now the tightness feels just a little bit harder and a little bit clickier. Some could say that the thin outer layer being that little bit softer and the harder inner core allows that softer cover just to grip on the club face a bit more, in theory. Now the third shot with the tightness I hit there, I did hit a little bit heavy, so the spin dropped to 5,000. The other ones were over 7,000. If I take that third shot out, the average with the tightness is just a flick more than the Shrixen. But I think I did put slightly better strikes on the Shrixen, but that's nothing to do with the golf ball. That is all me. The wedge I'm using is the RTX Zip Coral. I don't know if you can see, but I've got a nice blue ferrule and some blue writing in there because I like to get fancy. I've got the full sole here where it's slightly wider on the 56 and then I go with the low bounce sole on the 60 because I like to have that option of that little bit more forgiveness on one of the wedges in the back. Pro V1, Shrixen, Pro V1, Shrixen, Pro V1, Shrixen. Now the average there is exactly the same carry between both golf balls, but 110 against 110. That is my favorite number on the golf course. And I like to hit shots off the tee to try and leave that yardage as much as I can. With the Shrixen, I had 111, 110, 108. With the Pro V, I had 112, 108, and 111. So both very tight compared to each other. 10,640 against 10,503. So the tightless spun just a minute little bit more. Now bearing in mind, I've only hit six shots with each ball. I've already got a little bit of cutting on the cover on the Pro V1 and on the Shrixen I can't see any blemishes. Aha, I've got a cut there. So they're both just making the same sort of marks compared to each other. So okay, six shots, but durability wise, very similar. Right, now I'm gonna hit some seven irons. Be interesting to see if there's a difference in spin and things like that with these two golf balls. It's known on tour that when it's really windy, it tends to be a Shrixen player that's up there because they're known to be quite stable in the wind. Like pull draw, which is my normal sort of shape to be fair, just off the fringe. Then we go to the Shrixen. It's a very different feel. Now I've hit a little bit more of a fade and the spin's gone up. The spin could have gone up because of that strike and that flight next to the pin. I do feel like the Pro V is just that little bit harder, just that little bit clickier, minutely. Pro V. Sounds that a little bit higher pitch. That's a good one to compare to the previous shot. 6,099 spin. Also next to the pin. Nice. Back to the Shrixen. 
tiny bit thin. So I'm actually trying to create that shape to get away from my overdraw. Pin high, lovely jubbly. Back to the Pro V. Nice, very similar shots. My swing changes are working quite nicely. Back to the Shrixen. Ah, there's that little draw just coming in, still on the green. To be fair, I've got two straight ones and a draw with both golf balls. Main thing I've noticed so far is just that slight difference in feel. The Shrixen feels just that little bit softer. It doesn't really have any value to it, it's just a feeling. So 179 with the Pro V at 5,819 spin. 176, which is three yards shorter with the Shrixen, but it's giving me an extra 450 spin, which I quite like. Launch angle just a tiny bit higher, peak height within a yard of each ball, tightless being one yard lower. Last year I did use the Shrixen Q-Star divide because we didn't have the Z-Star in the UK and what I like doing is that if the wind was coming off the right, I'd line this up to the right fringe of the green and I'd hit down that way and the wind would drift it back to the pin. So I really liked that element on par threes to be able to line up to where I was aiming. And if you didn't like the divide but you wanted to practice things like that, you can practice with this and then go and use the normal Z-Star and get exactly the same performance. Right, let's see if we can get some mileage out of this. This is my normal driver that's in the golf bag. That was off the toe. That's going to draw too much. Yeah, right. That's not the golf ball's fault. Let's call that one a warm up. Cleveland Launcher XL with a Ventus Velocor Black 6X. Quite a nice combo with a really forgiving head and a really stiff shaft. I do like doing that. Deleting that shot because it was nothing to do with the golf ball. Lost my balance a little bit. Oh, it's going left today. Some would say it's really low spinning golf ball. Others would say I hit a bad shot. There we go, a little bit of a swing change and I've hit a nice and straight one. That was the Shrixen. Again, feeling quite nice and soft. 313, I'll take that. Right, let's try and replicate that with the Pro V. Yeah, very similar shot, similar shape. Maybe just a flick higher on the face in terms of strike, but it's done pretty good. 306. <laughs> little fade, sort of over correcting that big draw a little bit, but plenty of time in the air. 305. So using the Shrixen to play or to practice with off the tee, what if I use this line on the golf ball to direct the shots as to where I want it to start or where I want my swing path to go or any visual cue to help my change in flight. So if I put this to the right hand side and I'm going to try and hit a draw with it, does it help me achieve that off the tee? So I've set the line of the ball up literally just to the right hand side. And that really did help me like extend down that line and change my technique. I basically made sure I'm hitting that draw on 316 because I almost had a visual cue to feed into. Now on the golf course, I would see that as quite valuable, especially with the performance of a premium golf ball. Now I'm going to do the same again, but the opposite. I'm going to aim it just down the left hand side. So I've got that the line on that ball just lined up to the left to see if it can help me start it on the left and hit a little fade. Oh, it's trying to fade. It didn't quite. It's coming back. It's coming back slowly. It's up there though at 3.11. I like it. So two more shots with the Pro V. I'm going to hit a little draw and a little fade in the same way without that visual cue on top. Although, let's give it a fair chance. I'm going to use the line on the ball here in the same manner. So going just to the right hand side for a little draw. It's got that little draw. I really like that visual visual cue because I can feed down that same line. Again, I've done that twice with each golf ball. 307. Okay, right, we've got the line just to the left hand side. Let's go for that little fade in the same way. Nice. So I've actually got the fade there, which definitely helps in terms of getting it into a target. Ah, oh, pushed it a yard. 295. All in all, they're a very comparable golf ball. I've got 290 carry with the Shrixen and 287 with the Pro V. So the Shrixen three yards longer. On a very small pool of data, it's not enough shots to really give a definitive difference between the two. But I've achieved very, very similar backspin. 2134 with the Shrixen, 2159 with the Pro V. It's negligible the difference there. They're very similar. The Shrixen was faster off the face. I've got 161 and a half against 1. 
2.58.9. So the Shrixon was 2.6 mile an hour faster on that smaller set of data. Could just be that I put better strikes on it in all fairness. My peak height with the Pro-V was that little bit higher, 48 yards against 42 yards with the Shrixon. So again, that could be a little element of why they're a little bit more stable in the wind because I've got that little bit of a lower flight between the two. When I hit the fade with the Pro-V, I did get that little bit of extra climb. When I hit the fade with the Shrixon, it just kind of stayed on board and went a bit more forward. But with an extra four yards on the Shrixon, I really did like that visual cue in terms of when I'm trying to hit a certain shop shape, shape wise. My side spins averaged out at 41 left with the Shrixon and 114 left with the Titleist. So again, they're very, very similar. All in all, there's not much between them, but for me, I really like that two-tone color on a T-peg to help me start my direction of the, of the shot. So it really helps me visualize the shot that I'm trying to hit and feed into the target. Par threes, line it up to the side of the green when there's a side wind. And the last thing I want to look at is something you can do with your pitching and chipping with these with the Shrix and Divide golf ball. So I just want to demonstrate this with a Q-Star Tour, so a slightly different color, just so you can see the yellow and the red coloring there. So I'm going to put this one with the line going fairly straight, and I'm going to hit the shot, ideally, straight at the pin. There we go. Okay, I've overshot it a little bit, but you get what I'm saying with the direction. So, I don't know if you've ever thought about shaping a wedge from like 50 yards out. Now, you might not actually get the shape, but it does a very impressive thing with your spin rate. This is kind of for the more advanced golfer, but if you practice with one of these, you'll be able to tune in to what you could potentially do with your game. So I've got the divide line here going to the left-hand side, and I'm gonna hit a little fade. One thing I'm working on on my pitching is getting through the ball and still having the club pointing at my belt buckle. So I'm keeping that consistent with every shot that I hit. So I'm gonna go across the line here and almost play a little bit of a fade and get that same release to the belt. Little fade. So it didn't curve much, but we've got 7,800 spin. Which isn't bad for a partial shot. Now if I do the same but the opposite, if I aim that ball to the right hand side, so I've got that going over that way, if I get that same release, down the line of the golf ball. I've got a slight difference in shape. I'm a little bit shorter. It's dropped to four and a half thousand spin. So I've lost a lot of spin there. Imagine that landing into a pin. If I'm hitting a fade into the green from short range, it's gonna spin and stop quicker. If I hit a little draw on a pitch shot, it's gonna hit the ground and release a bit more. It's not gonna stop as quick. So I can use that to manipulate how the ball lands on the green for different pin positions. So when the pin's at the back, I might want to land it short and make sure it releases up. When the pin's at the front, I might want to get it just past the pin, but stop as quick as I can, making sure that I actually get on the surface. But if you're practicing that idea with a ball like this, it's very, very easy to put in place and change and change and change. Maybe have a little go with that when you're next practicing to see if you can manipulate your spin and change how the ball gets controlled into the pin.